Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Today we are making our needle felted frog prints. Here he is in all his glory. Um, and the needle felted heart, which is already packed in our frog, pin, frin, frog prints pack for you. If you've got it at the ready, then perfect. If you're only watching to see what, um, what this is all about, then you can um, obviously get the materials or maybe you still in time to get the frog prints um, if we're still stocking it. It's just one of those products that we probably don't continue for the next few years. Anyway, it's really nice to be here, even though um, if you're watching this live on Tuesday the 8th of March and um, um, I'm not actually live. I am pre-recording this because something very exciting has come up on that very day and I had to um, give this priority. All, all hopefully will be revealed very soon but at the moment I've just got to be quiet and now you're going to all wonder what on earth, what on earth. But to distract you from that topic we've got an amazing question today. I'm so annoyed I'm actually not live because I won't be able to see your answers. So as always with our make-alongs you can win yourself a prize and today's prize, are you ready for this? Okay, this is probably the best question we've ever asked. The giveaway is for two £15 gift vouchers, so two winners can uh, win this prize. And we want to know from you what is the most disgusting thing you have ever kissed and why. Keep it clean, guys, okay? So we don't want anything um, too... Um, um, what, how can I say? Anyway, keep it clean. What is the most disgusting thing you have ever kissed and why? And um, I, I have a, a very, very... Um, bad feeling that <laughs> this could go completely wrong so maybe it's just as well I'm not live but um pop it into the comments if you are watching this on YouTube you can um go, uh, pop this in the comments during the live stream on the 8th from 1 until 2 o'clock and if you're re-watching this on the 10th of um, March which is our Facebook replay at 7 p.m you can pop it in the comments there and then Alicia who will be supporting both live streams is going to pick two winners for each of um, the tutorial um, streams. Right. Oh goodness me. I can't I can't wait to hear your answers. I'm hoping it's something like maybe you've kissed a frog before. Um, not that I would find that disgusting, but you might find that really disgusting. Right, let's have a little look at our little chap. He's not just for Valentine's Day, he's for any time, for any time when you want to um give somebody your heart maybe or maybe you just love him because it's a frog maybe you want him to hold other things doesn't have to be a heart um he can he's fully poseable he's got um, pipe cleaner legs and arms and um so he can be in any position that you want him to be and you can needle felt him onto the um heart or you can just have him um posed around it with his arms unfelted and legs unfe unfelted onto him. Um, so yeah, he's quite a fun project. He is, um, he's super cute and he of course wears a, a crown which comes in our pack um, because he's a frog prince. So he's, um, he's worthy of, um, of a crown, definitely. And uh, let's have a quick look what is inside the pack and um, let's see what you need to make him. Right, here comes the pack. Da -da -da -dum. Here we are. Let's open this up. Okay, so you have got um, a very short instruction sheet in there for the needle felted heart. Incidentally, there is already a needle felted heart tutorial on our uh, YouTube channel, so um, you can watch that in detail if you want to um, make a heart along. I will just sort of give a bit of a a bit of a quick tutorial today and then here's the frog prints the materials are usually listed on our uh, youtube tutorial um, description so you can have a look on there it's very few um very few ingredients you just need some neon green new zealand bats some poppy red for the heart say equal numbers equal quantities and then um special i, I suppose are these um orange cotton covered pipe cleaners and of course the crown which is in here that's quite a heavy metal crown, um, which um, will fit him nice and lovely. He's got his glue and eyes in here um, in the paper bag. I'm going to leave them in for now, but just so you, that you know, they're seven millimeter large uh, black glue and eyes. And um, all you need is, is actually a medium felting needle and a felting mat to get 
going. You will do. Um, you will also need a little bit of clear drying glue um, to glue the eyes in and also to fasten the crown on. And then you've got these uh, two equal portions of wool. Now the red obviously is just for the heart. So in many ways, you're actually only using two colors in the pipe cleaners to make your frog. So it's quite an easy project, especially if you maybe want to make um, him in different colors. You can literally just get um, the, the colors that you need and uh, be in business already. I'm taking everything out that I need um, and I'm putting this box back on display so it doesn't look so bare there. There we go. Right, let's get started. And you will all be thinking now, what's the most disgusting thing I've ever kissed? I can't wait to hear what it is. Um, and I don't want to think about it because I'm going to get grossed out. But um, anyway, it's going to be so exciting. Right, um, you have four pipe cleaners in here. And I'm uh, as always, I'm going to the overhead camera to show you what is happening. But before I do this, I, I think it's worth it just to give you a little bit of a flick through my brand new book that came out. Um, we got it on Thursday. I looked at it for the first time on Friday. So I'm going to give you a quick tour through quick tour through the making fairy folk needle felted book brand new it's one of the thickest books that i've uh, written so it's definitely got more pages and therefore more projects in there let's have a quick look <clears throat> making needle felted fairy folk and um, we've got this is split into four different elements so starting with as as always it's a it's a little bit of a um, needle felting bible in that it gives you information about different fibers that have been used um, accessories um, there's definitely something around materials and tools there is a whole um, section on on um, there's a lot about materials and there's a whole section on skills and techniques what you need to know making these projects and um, and then um, we start with um, a large, the large basic body to make the, um, sorry, a basic body to make the large fairies and then you've got the basic body to make, make the small fairies. And um, so a lot of these fairies, you will have, you will have made similar ones in um, subscribing to our fairy book, which book box which incidentally next month is two years old so some of them might look a little bit familiar but there will be lots of um, new stuff in there as well so this is basically uh, it starts with earth then we go to um, let's see where the next element is um, still earth you can almost go by, by um, I think earth is the biggest one it's my favorite element I will be honest um, we have got here air so that's um, a sun uh, fairy, and then you've got these lovely butterfly fairies, um, rainbow fairy, and then we're going to water. Um, this is a, um, a different style kingfisher from any of the ones that you've done with the makers before. Not that it's a different kind of kingfisher, it's just made differently. You've got fish, you've got water nymphs, you've got a little uh, dragonfly fairy there. And, um, and then it goes on to finally go to fire, where you've got a phoenix and a fire salamander and a little, a little smoke fairies and... Um, oh, getting to the end... So the fire is definitely, um, there's a flame fairy there, it's definitely the least um, projects in there. But that pretty much sums me up. So let's have a quick flick through dragonfly fairy, minnow fish. Um, we've got a frog in here. So if you want to take it further from the, a stylized frog to a more realistic frog, this is a northern pool frog, incidentally, based on him anyway. So the kingfisher, um, got the water fairy in there, the ice fairy. We've got the sun fairy, we've got the butterfly fairies, um, where you get the templates as well to make the butterfly wings. This is something that's happening in our uh, fairy boxes um, and it is coming up. The fairy boxes in April um, have got butterfly fairies in them. <clears throat> Forget me not fairy, that's a, that's a good staple one for the makers. You can even buy your kit for that one. Uh, Rainbow fairy. The large fawn, some of you might have seen this before. Um, a small gnome, he's new. And a large gnome, he's new. There is a toadstool house in there, which we've all 
felt it together as one of our YouTube tutorials um, already as a sneak preview. We've got some acorn children in there which are really um, super easy to make and, and wear these lovely acorn cups. Seed baby in a walnut shell, absolutely love these. They're such such easy project to make and who doesn't like one of those in a, um, uh, in a little walnut shell. Beech nut girls um, or children I should say, you can make boys uh, where you use the beech nut um, shell there as well and then there's a wood mouse. Um, a violet fairy, an emerald fairy, they are the daisy chain, some of you know them already, and a daisy fairy, amethyst fairy, and so on and so on. If you want your signed copy, um, then you have to buy this from the makers, you can't get it anywhere else signed. Okay, just a little, a little um, diversion, just because I've been so excited and I do absolutely love this cover of the book as well. Um, so thank you for uh, bearing with me on this. And um, let's get cracking. Right, I am following my own instructions. Always difficult, but I will. Right, let's go to the overhead camera so we can do all of this together. So you take one of the orange pipe cleaners, which is here, and bend the ends in by three centimeters. Remember, we've got a tape measure here on our um, little edge of, the, of each page, so you can bend the pipe cleaners in three centimeters. Yeah. And um, and then take another orange pipe cleaner and cut two times twelve centimeter lengths off. So I'm going to measure that on here again. So that is twelve centimeters here. Apologies in advance. I haven't got my my uh, wire cutters here, but to be perfectly honest, these pipe cleaners cut much better with um, scissors and another length of twelve centimeters. Right, so now I have got the making of one set of arms or legs. Um, so this also needs to be bent in by three centimeters, which means if you bent it in three centimeters at each end, you meet in the middle and you've um, halved it therefore. So let's do that and do that as well. I don't need to measure that because it, I know it's 12 centimeters long. If I met, um, bend it in by three centimeters at each end, I, I basically just bend the middles, middles into um, sorry, the ends into the middle. Right, there we go. I've got now I've got my pipe cleaner with a three centimeter ends bent in. I've done them the opposite way. I don't think it matters. And then you take one of the shortened lengths, so this is this one here, and um, and lay onto the end of the longer pipe cleaner so that it makes the two outer toes and uh, so basically I'm pinching these in now and if you pinch these in as well you can see that this now if you lay it on top this becomes one toe two toe three toe so you've got your three toes here okay I'll show you that again so this is the bent in pipe cleaner I've bent them into the middle so now the um, the edges are round and then I'm going to lay this on top of where the bent pipe cleaner is here and that makes now a set of um, toes and then you're going to use your super green couldn't be any greener maybe some of you have kissed slime reminds me a bit of slime that um, will and now you're going to take a strand of the green wool and first off wrap around the join using this the the secure to secure the shorter length of pipe cleaner against the longer one. So basically you need to go in and out between the toes as it was to make sure that you're fastening these um, pipe cleaners together now so that they become one. And then you're going to start wrapping the wool along one of the toes. Maybe you've kissed toes before. Um, maybe you've kissed frog's toes before. I'm going to think of all kinds of things that you're going to come up with. Um, I do know of people who've eaten really disgusting things. <laughs> when I was a child growing up in Germany, I, I was like growing up in this tiny little village and there was, um, there were these uh, farm children. Um, it, I, I don't know, it, it was just so rural and they were, they were, they were just different. They were different. I can't explain it any other way, but this is a long time ago. And I remember that one of the boys he used to sit in the in the dirt on the on the on the road and he'd um he'd literally pick up dirt and eat it. And then um he would eat worms as well. So 
but I'm, I'm sure he didn't kiss them, he just ate them. We always thought he was a bit weird as children. <laughs> oh, I don't remember going um, in the winters um, when the road was so um, snowed up in. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now without talking. You're basically covering all three toes up so that you've got um, just the little yellow bits left at the end. And then once you've covered them all, I'm literally using wispy, wispy ends of them. Um, then you can start working your way up the pipe cleaner and neaten up this um, this wrist here, or maybe it's an ankle, depending on what it is. So just wrap it up the pipe cleaner. So what I was saying was that I was must have been maybe about seven or eight, and I went down on my sledge on this snowed up. It was completely snowed in the road. You couldn't really get in and out with a car. So we we just basically sledged down. And it was a dead end at the top, and that's where I lived. And at the bottom was the farm. <clears throat> and I um, accidentally, because when you're on a sledge, these are the old wooden sledges, you didn't have terribly much control. And I, I accidentally sledged into one of the um, farm children, the boy, and his mother came running out and screeching at the top of her voice. Um, and, um, and then she basically... She she um she started to get really nasty with me, so I didn't know what to say to her because I was so in shock. So I just called her. The only thing that I could call her that I thought was rude enough, bearing in mind I was seven or eight, I just called her. You potato, you potato. <laughs> no, I didn't call her potato. I called her you butter biscuit. That's right, butter biscuit. I don't know where potato came from. I just called her you biscuit, you butter biscuit. I couldn't think of anything rude to say. Um, but I needed to needed to say something back because she was she was really horrible to me because she thought I'd run in by accident into her son and I, I was absolutely mortified that I ran him over. So um, then my mother came out and there was a whole slinging match about whose child was at fault and I, I by that time I'd lost all interest and I went on probably played with this boy and our mothers were just screeching at each other so that was quite funny. But yeah, anyway, I don't know why I was telling you that. Just reminded me of um, this boy eating worms and dirt sitting on the road. <laughs> and just me thinking, I must how innocent I must have been to to only think of the word butter biscuit as being the rudest word that I could think of. I'm sure my children could think of way worse word, words when they were seven and eight. Right, what you've seen me do now is I'm neatening up this part by just felting the wool down a bit. Um, to make absolutely sure that the pipe cleaner, the um, orange or yellow pipe cleaner, whatever color, what do you reckon? Is that orange or yellow in your view? We always have different views. It's to me, it's like a golden, a golden yellow. It's like a yolk color, right? Um, if you if you're used to this kind of um, eggs, some, some of them are barely yellow, but um, yeah. Or is it? Maybe it is an orange. I don't know. Maybe this is orange. Right here we go. So one side is done. Now I'm going to repeat this exactly on the other side, as you um, can probably imagine. And then we're going to do it all over again for the second set of legs. So put these on top of each other. By the way, I'm using um, the A4 Earth Friendly Felting Mat, and I'm hoping that by the time you watch this, it's, it's back in stock. This is one of our best selling products, and we cannot, almost cannot order them in fast enough. Um, to sell them. They are the best thing ever. People have, and I'm not just saying that, people have told us that. We get lots of compliments about our Earth Friendly Felting Mat, and this is one of the popular sizes. However, we are also getting the extra large sets back in, so watch out for those. These are the square large sets, and they're um, due to arrive any time. Um, I should also tell you, this is, might be a good time, so uh, th that we have um, in throughout February, February 20. 22 um, we are going to uh, give you a special treat by um, by giving you 25% of all of our fibers this is felting fibers but also luxury fibers and any anything that we call fibers anything that's kind of remotely from wool tops to wool bats to angelina fiber to um, sparkly stuff to all kinds of things we're giving you 25% off throughout the month of um, February, that's where we are. And basically, here, this is what you need to know. You use the code F for fiber, Feb, F-E-B. So there's two F's, two F's, F-F-E-B 25. Capital letters, 
pop this into your discount box um, as you check out um, on www.themakers.co.uk. So it's um, FFEB25. And this is um, the website here, themakers.co.uk, and you get 25% um, off throughout the whole of February, and it ends at the end of February at midnight on the 28th of February. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a leap year, otherwise it would have even lasted a day longer. Right, let's get back to our um, titsy, titsy little toes here. And I'm wrapping each individual toe with the wool. And... We've also got, um, I've got, I've, I'm really excited because we've got a new, kind of a new product, but it's, um, it's also not really a product, but from very soon on, <laughs> I don't know when yet, maybe, maybe we will know this by, uh, by, uh, when you're watching this, you will be able to buy a little sample sheep from the makers. This is, you've heard it here first, little sample sheep, um, so that you can keep a track of all the different fibers that we stock and they're like little swatches. And um, they're gonna be very, very cheap. We will not make any money on them. We're literally selling this at cost and, um, and they will um, be there to help you with um, getting maybe a whole set of swatches um, collect collections. And I'll, I'd, I won't even give you too many details yet because I'm quite excited by what they're gonna look like. They're not just gonna be boring old swatches. They will also look quite exciting and, um, and, and endearing. So you can collect your sheep um, of swatches. That's basically what's happening. Remember when you're wrapping the wool around the pipe cleaner, always wrap it in the same direction. So get back to the point where you started out from. And um, it's good to remember that, um, which whether it was on the right or on the left where you had the, um, the foot. And I'm going round this a couple of times. So I'm going back to the um, beginning to start point and then I'm working my way all the way up now as I'm trying to close the gap this is actually going to be the other way around from when I first wrapped the wool so I just have to be a little bit careful that I'm not unwrapping the next layer but you could just attach it softly and then just give it a few steps with your medium felting needle remember that's all you need to use is your medium felting needle and um, we've got a load of spring kits coming out as well um, I, I, I haven't got an image for that yet, but soon we will uh, let you know what they are. We have got a whole collection of butterflies that's coming out as a single kit, so you can make your own um, collection of butterflies, um, including the large blue, the red admiral, the small tortoiseshell and the peacock butterfly, and there will be others added to it as well. Right, here we go. One set of legs, and now I've got to make exactly the same again. So remember, you've got your two pipe cleaners here um, and you're going to um, use, oh dear, I think I've, I've been shortchanged by one pipe cleaner, I've just realized. Um, let me just double check what's on the, on the instructions. What does it say? Five, yeah, I should have had five pipe cleaners. I have had one of the proto kits before anybody else has had their kit and I think we spotted this but unfortunately not with me so I'm going to have to use a different color pipe cleaner in a, mi in a minute which doesn't really matter because it's going to be completely covered I've got enough to make my toes but when you have this you you will have five orange pipe cleaners um, I'm going to use um, four and one white one right so 12 centimeters of um, of this needs to be cut off. So you have, you will have some leftover pipe cleaners. It almost sounded like leftover food then. And I'm just wondering, oh, I just so wish I could join in the giggle of all the disgusting things that you've had, to, that you've kissed before. I guess what, if I had to say one of the most disgusting things I've kissed before is probably children with snotty noses. That's probably something that I um, that I would say was probably quite disgusting. You know, when you give your child a really great big old kiss and then you realise they've got snot all over their faces. Um, three centimetres at this end. It's about there. It, it does pay off to be precise because then you've got the same length toes on all of the feet. So now I'm going to fasten the shorter ends back onto the um, end of the pipe cleaner. You can pinch the toes tightly shut 
so that they just got the little knobbly bits at the end when um, the wool is wrapped around it. And, and notice how I'm teasing the wool off. I'm actually teasing it off from the side so that I get the nice, um, a nice strand of wool rather than just a tuft of wool. And then I'm going to fasten these on by crisscrossing around that join. Yeah. And once you've got it fastened on, then you can start wrapping the wool up each toe. Yeah. Keep them nice and tightly wrapped. You shouldn't have to needle felt into them, but you can if need be, um, especially because they're doubled up. So you can almost stub into the middle of the pipe cleaner. It's a rare thing. Normally you hit the, the wire straight off, but if you sort of gently stub into the middle, then um, that's a good way to fasten them on. I'm just demonstrating this here. You might not have to do any stabbing at all around the toes. And now I'm going to, so I'm showing you this four times in effect because I've got to make four feet. And um, each set of leg, <clears throat> um, there are two sets of legs, so they're, they're joined together rather than four individual legs. And there's the last toe on this side. Work in small quantities, it's always the best to work in small quantities. You don't want to uh, pile it on and then you could end up taking it off because it's it's just too, too much on there, not necessary. And then work your way up the leg because you need to cover that um, pipe cleaner in the wool. You can see I'm, going, I'm switching from wrapping the wool around the pipe cleaner or twisting the pipe cleaner around the wool. Either way, whatever works for you, go for it. Whatever you find the easiest. And when you do stub into um, the join, then be mindful that there is a wire inside. So don't go crazily uh, forceful into it. Just go quite steady into it. There. So I'm just going to remind you what we're aiming for. There's the frog. So these are, this is what we're doing at the moment. We're making the arms and legs of, um, of, of the frog. And then obviously we have to build up the body and the head and everything else. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's take it each at, at a step. That's always what I say is it's all, always about start at the beginning and don't worry too much about the end because um, by the time you get to the end, you, you almost don't notice it that you're at the end because you've just allowed the process to take place so don't don't read ahead and think oh I don't know how to do this or oh, this is getting too complicated just go with the process trust that we we've put this together um, for you so that you can exactly go from one step to the second step to the third step to the fourth step and so on and so forth so it's um it's uh, unless you do need to know where you're heading then of course read ahead but just don't let it overwhelm you. You will get there in the end, just following it from the beginning to the end. Get rid of that bit of wool around there, and then one more toe. <clears throat> Apologies if you're finding this a little bit too fast to make along. That sometimes does happen. Um, if that is the case, don't stress. Just sit back, watch it, and re-watch it later or just keep up as best as you can. And then um, you can always rewind, even during the live stream, you can rewind um, to where you need to know what the next step is. Um, but if you're watching this live, do give us the thumbs up on this live video and definitely make sure that you participate in our competition if you're watching this live on the, on the 8th of February, 2022 at one o'clock on our YouTube channel, you can, put a comment into um, the uh, the comment boxes and, um, and, and all we want to know from you is what's the most disgusting thing you've ever kissed. And as I'm saying it, I am really, really hoping that you're all gonna be very sensible and um, uh, remember that this is, um, yeah, that you don't gross us out. Don't gross us out. But um, maybe you need to gross us out. I don't know, just, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to say anything else. I don't want to give you ideas. Um, what else is disgusting that you could possibly kiss? Um, I don't know. Snotty faces. I said that. Um, I don't know. Some 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 gross animal, maybe something that really freaks you out. Um, 
something that I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's a very good question. I thought it was a good question, but now that I think about it, could potentially be extremely dangerous. Right, two sets of legs. I haven't decided yet what are the arms and the legs, but um, that uh, can come in a minute. So according to the instructions, we now take the fifth white, um, sorry, um, orange pipe cleaner, but I haven't got that, okay? So I've only got four orange pipe cleaners, which might be quite good also um, just for, uh, for contrast. So I am now taking the white pipe cleaner, but you can take the orange one. Now, if you have, if you're doing this afterwards and you have, you, you find your own pipe cleaners, you don't actually need a colored pipe cleaner for the, for the, um, for the other thing because it gets completely covered up. There won't be anything, um, yeah, you don't, you don't need that. But there's my sets of legs. Um, all ready to be turned into a frog and that's what we're going to do next. Before I do this I should just let you know that um, the next live stream is coming up next week will be the um, the Bluebell Fairy on the 15th of February. Remember this is uh, the project that is in our current February fairy box and um, we'll make this together at one o'clock next week Tuesday and then it's repeated on Facebook at um, two days later so the 17th of February at um, 7 p.m. The week after that is already the 22nd of February and we will be making a project that is in the Simple Needlefelds book, um, another book of mine, and that will be The Little Hen and Chicks. And it's a really cute project if you've got children or if you just want to learn how to um, make a hen, you don't have to make the chicks. That's a really good project for that. And then um, it's already, would you believe it, the 1st of March, which is, of course, as always, our subscription um, unboxing, subscription box unboxing. And it's um, it's at 11 o'clock. So you have to um, make a note of that, that it's slightly earlier. Right, let's go to um, the overhead camera for a minute. Okay, here we go. Okay. So now I'm on page two of the instructions and um, we're making the body shape and well, we're attaching the legs now to the body. So first of all, you are going to, I've gone a bit faster, let's read that first. Fold the remaining pipe cleaner into half. Okay. So this is not the remaining pipe cleaner because it would be orange. I've had to use a white one. I've folded it into half and then twist it around itself at about five centimeter down from the bend. So this is where the bend is and then five centimeters down from the bend is about here. I'm going to twist it. So this is my five centimeters. I'm just gonna give it one or two twists. And now you're going to um, below the twist insert. So this is now joined together because I've twisted it. Below that, you're going to insert a set of legs. Now make sure that they're the right lengths. So maybe you can fold them just in half to make sure. And then you twist around that bit underneath the arm, so to speak. You twist the pipe cleaner again. And then continue twisting the pipe cleaner for about four to five centimeters. So just keep twisting it and then measure it again. So you're about four to five centimeters down like that. And then guess what? You're going to insert the next set underneath. And I'm again, I'm just making sure it's the right um, is right in the middle and then you twist that around again. Now you will end up with um, a little bit spare of pipe cleaner here at the base and um, all you need to do is don't twist them all the way shut but twist them back up the body individually one and then the other and just twist them around the main body pipe cleaner. So you get, you're basically tucking the ends back up the body. And there you go, you've got a frog already on your mat here with the dangly legs and the dangly arms. And, um, and I guess now what we need to do is cover him up. And for this, you've got your green wool. That's all you need to cover him up. And you, um, um, so after that, bend the ends up, and now we've done that. From now on, you will have to fatten the frog up by adding layers around this his middle. Before that, take a strand of the green wool and wrap around the leg joint a few times um, to further secure the legs. So basically, we're starting with um, with this part here where we've put the legs in. That also just covers up the ends. So you're going in and around the legs a few times. 
it's like yeah putting a nappy on i wonder if anybody's ever kissed a slug a slug that, that sounds like a disgusting thing oof that reminds me of um of a certain film where somebody was bringing up slugs harry potter film um yeah that was probably pretty disgusting um right and then you go up the body so um you can see now that you are you've got sort of a, a skinny a skinny frog in the making but we do want him to be a little bit a little bit bigger now you can start felting this as you go along especially if if it's sort of quite loose unless you've got, got really nice tight wraps then you might not have to do this but felt it um in as you go along just bear in mind there is a wire inside so don't stab straight into it and um, then you're going to fill out the middle of the frog with green wool wraps and also go round and over the shoulders on both sides. This is not the finished size of the frog. He needs to be a lot fatter than that. But now you fill out more of the, the body and then you're going to go up and around the shoulders on both sides there. So now you've got almost all of the pipe cleaner covered. Felt that down as well a bit. It doesn't actually say this stage of the body. It is it is not the um, this size of the body is not the finished one. You will be adding more wool layers. So you might not have to stop this down yet, but you can if you if you need to. And um, what we're going to do now, uh, we need to build up his skinny legs. Um, frogs have actually got really um, um, distinct legs, like they've got nice shaped thighs and nice shaped um, calves. So that's what we need. Um, that's what we need to do. So you um, wrap more layers onto the thighs, build up a bulk. So give him some nice froggy thighs. And it does actually help if you bend the leg in at the knee because then you you sort of get an idea of where you what you're aiming for so build some thighs up here and again felt down remember to bend it in at the knees it really does help get a sense of um of, of shape and proportion and felt that down if um, you are felting this and uh, you want to want to smooth it out with a fine needle at the very end, of course you can do that too. I think the challenge here is that you always make sure that the transition from, say, from the thigh to the rest of the body is nice and smooth. So once you've um, covered the thigh up, just add another little bit of a layer, then you could go over that join again. So wrap the wool around the body again because then that gives it um gives it a nice um a nice transition yeah. and then you're going to um, wrap, um add a little bit more bulk onto his um calf as well so frogs have got really strong legs because they can jump so far and so high they do need this like this slight muscly muscly legs has anybody ever kissed a frog um, I probably have. I used to be absolutely obsessed with um, all frogs and nudes and when I was a child I used to absolutely adore them. I, I, I so wanted them to be my pets. <laughs> Not very cuddly, but yes yeah, still. So remember to keep the knee join um, uncovered so that it, it looks more in, you you want there to be a bulging calf and you want there to be a bulging thigh but you don't want the knee joint to be um covered again so just keep that separate and just felt it down there so now i've, I've finished one leg here that's that looks more like a like a, a frog's leg now and then bend the other leg in and then obviously um, copy that on the other side as well. So wrap the layers over that bit, but don't cover the knee joint. Just cover the thigh. Make that nice and muscly and a little bit fatter. More wool. Should have plenty of um, 
the screen wool left to bulk him out. If you're getting worried about um, using too much wool on the legs, then just leave the legs for now. Go on to the rest of the body and come back to the legs um, when you've got when you know for sure that you've got wool left. You should have enough to um, to do that too. I'm always working on the basis that some people felt the wool down really solid and um, some are less solid. So I'm working on the basis that some of you are um, felting this down a lot more. So you do need more wool. Felt it down. Take your time. You don't need to rush this. I know that I'm always um, a little bit speedy. Um, I could probably do a better job if I slowed it down a bit, but then I would be sitting here probably for a couple of hours instead of just one hour. And let's, I'm going to do the calf on this one first to make sure that um, it's a bit deceptive, the proportions. I think I'm, I'm, I've got the knee in the right place. Blend it in there. got a slightly thicker ankle on this leg. Maybe I can felt it down a bit. Right, let's felt that down. So we've also decided that um, the Sophie Wheatley um, workshop, which is happening um, at the end of March, we are going to, um, there, there were two, two weekends that we offered. One was a pet portrait one, and the other one is an animal portrait one. So if you want to make your own pet, a portrait of your own pet, a realistic portrait of your pet, then that's perfect for you. Uh, if you just want to, if you're nature loving and you want to make a hair or something like that, then that's perfect too. However, we're going to combine the two weekends into one, so you can now join for the um for the um, pet and uh, the animal portrait, it can be one and the same thing. So do felt into the knees because you do want to keep them quite separate, like proper knee joints. So they need to look separate as well. And, um, and then um, make sure that they're sort of covered, the legs are covered in a similar um, thickness. Just need to go around the body with this one again. Oh, I'm not yet. Felt that down, and then we're going to move on to the arms and do something similar, but not quite as as um, as bulky. It's quite fun making these legs. So it brings gets the shape of the frog. Definitely you get an idea of what the frog will be like. There we go. So Valentine's Day is one of those days um, that I'm in a little bit of a... Um, I, have, I actually have got problems with Valentine's Day, I'll be honest. I have never in my whole life either written or received a Valentine's card, day, uh, card and I don't mind. I just think that it's um, it's so commercialized. I've always felt like, oh, this is the day where I've got to declare my love, or where somebody, you know, you know it's like I don't want, I don't want to do that. I, I want to do it when I want to do it, not when I'm being told to do it. Um, but I, I, I totally get it that there have to be maybe days when we, <coughs> when we can do this, and maybe there are some fun stories that um, you can you know of where where you actually. Without Valentine's Day, maybe you would have uh, not found each other. Here we go. Frog, um, a frog in distress by the looks of it, um, but not for much longer. So now we've got um, the legs. We've made, um, we've bulked them up a bit. You can pose all of this later on. And now we're going to do something very similar at the top. So when I was telling you earlier about uh, Sophie Wheatley, here is a bit of a... Um, a visual thing so that you can get your head around that too. So it's basically um, from the 26th to the 27th of March. It is no, a non-residential workshop, so um, held in Nailsworth, which is where our headquarters are, in Gloucestershire near Stroud. Um, if you, um, the postcode in fact is GL6. So if you look for Nailsworth GL6, 
um, then you can find it on on Google Maps or whatever map you're using, and um, and you have to find your own accommodation. I don't think there is a shortage of accommodation in that area, so um, Stroud is the obvious one. It's about four or five um, miles down the road, um, but there's also Airbnb in Ellsworth, and there's hotels and and so on. So you you can certainly uh, book your um, your accommodation and um, and then we will be at the youth club which is walking distance from Nailsworth town if you happen to get somewhere um, into an Airbnb Airbnb near hotel or Airbnb near the town center right right let's do the arms here we go you will be doing the same with the arms upper um, upper legs. oh upper arms upper legs um, build the upper arm, bend, oh I see, you will be doing the same with the arms as you did with the upper legs, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, bend in at the elbow but do not add um, more layers onto the lower arm. So we're keeping that skinny but we're adding a little bit more to the upper arm. The upper arm should measure about one centimeter and be visibly larger than the lower arm, felt down accordingly. So we're just adding... Um, bulk to the upper arm but not the lower arm it's got no muscles there and then wrap it around him this is still not the finished size of the body i may just add so we're building the arms and legs up first and then do this on the other side as well and remember to bend in at the elbow because then you know where to stop wrapping. Don't go further down the arm than the upper arm. There we go. And fell down as well. And now, next, going to page number four now. Um, head. We're working on the head next. So we've done arms and legs. We haven't finished with the size of the body yet, but we're going to work on the head. And you do have to bend things out of um, out of um, the way to get on with the head. So now you're going to use the same wool, and you're going to um, wrap the wool around there. The frog's head will be broad. Um, will be broad, blunt nose, mouth, and the dome shape is achieved later by adding the eyes. So at the moment, we're just covering it up with the green wool and we felt it down so that we cover um, the pipe cleaner. So now you can't even tell anymore that I had a white pipe cleaner in there. So just cover this up. And then felt it down. And then because we've got we we've got a bit of the pipe cleaner poking out there, you're just going to make a wad of wool, which basically you just tease out fibers and turn them into sort of a, um, a thicker cover like that. And then you lay them over the end of the pipe cleaner and then you just felt that down. So now you that is basically covering the end of the pipe cleaner so that there's no um, color peeping out. Yours would be orange minus white, but in any case, you're covering it up that way, and then you felt that down along the head as well. The underneath of the head will be flat, and the top of the head will be bulging. So what you need to decide now is, um, ideally, what's the top and what's the um, or what is the front and what is the back of the frog. So you might want to look at him and see if there's sort of a part that looks more like one or the other. So, uh, mm, I think I'm going to make that the front. So um, that part under the head, I need to felt down flat. And because if you imagine now, when you bend the head, You've got your um, your frog head is starting to take shape. So the top will be round, 
the base will be flat. And um, to broaden the head sideways, add another small wad to one side of the head. So when we talk about wads, we mean little wisps of wool that you tease off and then you lay this. So I want to make this, I want to make it now broader. So I'm going to lay this onto the side of the head. I'm actually doing this from the top like that. Felt it on, on the top first and I felt it on, on the side, underneath, sorry, underneath and then I'm going to felt it down more to shape it. And you might have to repeat this. So this is sort of building uh, layers um, very specific in a particular area without having to wrap it every time. So just build this um, layer up and then repeat it again if necessary. So I'm going to do the other side now. Little wisps of wool. Nice, nice fat layer there. Lay this onto this side this time. Felt it down at the top and then around the sides. It might look a little bit messy to start with, but just felt it, felt the, felt the what on around the edges first, and then felt it down um, where you're trying to shape it. So um, at, I'm felting underneath my head at the moment, so I'm, I want this nice and flat. So I'm felting this more um, down here, and then I'm going around the sides as well to felt that down. So you're basically building the shape up now bit by bit. As, um, as you want the frog to have more of a shapely head. Remember the wire inside, that's always the, it's always the bit where it could be a needle killer. So do remember that. Now, I am so desperate to know what is the most disgusting thing that you've ever kissed. Um, trying to think of lots of things. What might be disgusting to you might not be disgusting to me. You see, like I would, wouldn't mind kissing a frog, but some people might find that absolutely disgusting. Um, I think kissing a slug, I would find that disgusting. Anything slimy, I wouldn't like that. But then frogs, you see, frogs aren't slimy despite what people are thinking. They're actually very, they're very cold, which gives the impression of them being slimy, but they're not slimy, they're just cold. And the same like snakes, they're not actually slimy. Right, it looks a little bit more bulged this way than it looks that way, but I have broadened the sides of um, the head now. You can do this more. So on here, um, yeah, it's about the same broadness. So if you wanted to build it up a little bit more, you can. Um, the broadest part of the head will be about three and a half centimeter tapering to about three centimeters at the, at the front. So let's just check this out. Yeah, that's not bad actually. That's good. Um, looks feels almost like I've done this before. And um, and now what you're going to do is you're building the eyes. So you've got um, you've got your little face here at the moment. I can actually felt this down a little bit more. It's quite pointy. Let's felt that down a bit. So you will be adding more bulk to the head now because we've got to make the um, the eyes, which are sort of like dome dome shape, almost like dormer windows on a head. And um, for this, you take a wisp of the green wool like this, and you're going to roll it into a small sausage from one end to the other. Fold the sides in as you go because you want to make almost like a little sort of a little olive shape or size of a jelly bean. That's what I've. Um, been referring it to and then you felt that down all over mind your fingers as you do that if you um, if you wear finger protectors you can get them there we sell them too they're like little leather symbols for your finger and your thumb um, the funniest thing that I've ever seen is and it's not uncommon and if you've done it before you have probably can laugh at yourself is that people wear them on the hand that they use the uh, that they hold the needle um, in which I think is hilarious um, of course that's not what you do so you've got a little jelly baby there or little jelly bean rather and then you do that again 
with another piece of wool. Sometimes it's, it's better actually to separate two equal sizes um, of wool off first and then roll it into a shape rather than trying to remember how much you've used the first time around. Felt that down into a little sausage shape. Mind your fingers as you're doing it. So you have to step into the ends um, to round it off a bit and make it slightly more squat. There. And then I'm going to attach this in a minute to the top of the head for the um, for the little eye, like the domed eyes that they have got, frogs have. So make them as as um, as similar as you can possibly do them. There you go, two little, two little. Um, they almost look like broad beans, actually, almost the right color as well. I'm going to page five now. So now what you need to do is, if you look at your frog from the face on, these need to sit on his head like that. So they they are literally um, fastened on like this, and to fasten them on bit by bit. You just um, get get them on just so that you can um, let go of it. And now you need to pinch them so that they are slightly facing forward. Can you see what I'm doing here? So I'm pinching, I'm, I'm pinching my jelly bean like that, so that I've got a little a little um, like a little bend in them so that they can face forward. That's what I'm doing. and felt them on. Um, so we are going to um, cover all of this up in a minute. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't look pretty. Just felt it on. I hope you weren't any of those people who used to dissect frogs at school. I think that's absolutely hideous. I hope they don't do that anymore. Well, I Fortunately, I never had to do that. I would have absolutely refused point blank. Um, and then you do this on the other side as well. So sometimes it's easier to felt them on a little bit first and then pinch it and bend it in. So you're stabbing into the edge of that bean that you've made and at the same time you're trying to bend it sort of that it's slightly shaped forward and <laughs> it does look a little bit like I'm dissecting a frog. And so you've, you've given him almost like mouse ears, but they're not mouse ears. And um, don't worry if it doesn't look pretty at this point. Don't worry if it looks attached. Just get them on so that they're roughly the same um, size and that they're felted on so they look like that. Slightly bent forward. Okay. So the, the fun bit is that you can now cover all of this up and that's when you give it the proper shaping. So you can use um, a thin, thinnish bit of wool and just lay this onto his head so that it um, covers the area where his um, where you've attached his eyes and then just felt this down around the edges first so don't worry about shaping um, the head yet just felt this piece of wool on so that it's um, it's taut on top of the head so it's nice and tight Felt it on, mine is even reaching a bit into the body, which is fine. Just felt it down underneath, all around the edges, wherever the wispy fibers are. And then you're going to follow that line between the eyes. So now you're going to shape, follow the shape underneath it. To, um, to make that shape come out and it makes it look a lot more as if the eyes that you felt it separately onto the head are now literally attached to the head as if they're meant to be there. And felt it down all around. And before you realize it now, the head now looks like a frog head where you've got the underneath nice and flat and the top is, is bulging and, um, and that's exactly what we want. 
So you can have the eyes sort of slightly to the side, or you can have them at the front. Um, if you have them at the front, it does actually look quite cute, because then the frog is sort of looking to um, at you. So I'm felting into that shape and making a bit of an indent indentation there for the eyes to go. As long as they're the same, as long as they're facing the same way um, on on each side, um, however you wherever you want them pointing, that's absolutely fine. And just reading, um, yeah, that's right. We we we're making him fatter at the very end. For now, we're just giving him his face shape, making sure the eyes are sitting in the same position. Just felt that down. So we've got it all. There you go. Um, oh, that's a bit wonky here. Let's felt that down a bit more. Definitely look at your frog from the front. That's always good for any any um, creatures that you're making because it gives you a real sense of symmetry. And then you know, you know, you look at one side and you think, oh, that looks exactly the same as the other side. And then you realize it's not the same. So here we go. Once you put them in him into position, that also helps to get that. Um, idea of shape again and felt uh, all the wool down. There's a lot of um, stuffing going on right now. There. And, um, and so now what you need to do is you're going to um, add the um, bit of orange that came in your kit. Where the heck is that? Well, you've got a bit of orange here and you're going to add a tiny wisp into um, where the eye is going to go. So it's like behind the black um, glue and eye, you're gonna have to have a little bit of orange and just felt that in there, like a round disc or sort of a disc with a, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit straighter at the base and rounder at the top, if you can manage that. That will add depth to the eye as well. You don't have to do that. You could just, you could just have um, no color in there. You could just stick with black. Do that on the other side. Yeah. You don't even have to pre-shape it. Just allow the needle to pull in the fibers as you're stabbing it. It's, I always love doing that because it just gives the perfect. It shows perfectly what the needle actually is capable of. Stabbing the wool there. And if for whatever reason it doesn't look quite the same, now is your time to adjust it. So I feel like one eye is looking more forward, the other one isn't. You can add a bit more, just make sure that you've got it symmetrical. Whatever you need to do to get it symmetrical, do that now before you add the glue in eyes into it. And um, for the next step, you have to have your eyes at the ready. That's better. He's now looking um, straight at me. So get your eyes out of um, the pack. Remember, they're seven millimeter black glue in eyes. There you go. And um, we love these eyes. They're on a glass um, head with a pin, with a metal pin. And um, to fasten them in, you need nothing else other than your felting needle and a bit of clear drying glue. So you're gonna poke a hole into the eyes. The needle will come out somewhere else, so be mindful that it comes out. Make a big hole and then sink the eye in. Yeah. And then do the same on the other side. Just, just be mindful where the needle comes out so you're not gonna poke yourself. And then insert the needle all the way to the thicker part. Insert the eye. So now you've got both eyes in there. And um, if they're in the right position, then you just need to um, get your glue bottle. We love these little 
um, stick it glue bottles, but whatever you have got, get that. And um, just add a dab of glue behind the eye. Push them back in. If you feel like you should have made a larger orange um, patch there, then you can still do that once the eyes are dry. So you can still decorate your frog in that way a bit more. Now my frog's head is a bit uneven, so I'm, I'm leaving the eyes to dry while I'm working a bit more on his nose. There, it's a bit more even now. And all you need to do for his um, nose and mouth, you just take a wisp of that orange wool and needle felt him a mouse. Now you can make him a smiling mouse. So start at one end and then just go across the other side. And the only the way, the way to make a smiling mouse is by having the end bit slightly curved up. That will give him a smiling mouse mouse. Remember there's a wire inside, so it might be quite hard to felt in there. But do your best. And that will also create almost like a little indentation there. There. Smiley mouse. So what I notice is that there's a tiny bit of white of pipe cleaner coming through. Um, if that is the same with you, but with a different color, then you can literally just take a bit of green wool, and just cover it up again. Nothing with needle felting is ever um, un, unsavable. You can save everything. Just felt that down. Got plenty of the green wool left. And there you go. Just felt it down. And repeat it if need be. So don't put up with it if you don't want it there. Don't put up with it. Just cover it. And do that again. You notice that I'm tearing the wool shorter, so I get a smaller um, patch that I can use, like a sticking plaster. It's a small sticking plaster rather than a big one, because I don't want to cover the mouth up again. I don't want to repeat that. But if need be, you could repeat all of that as, again, uh, as well again. Right, that, I think that's done the job now. And, um, and then you can give him um, some nostrils. So the nostrils are literally just little tiny amounts of this orange. You've got loads of this orange, by the way. And the nostrils go on top of the face, like here. And again, all you need to remember is to be symmetrical. So if you're putting it um, on one side, then make sure that the other one goes in the mirror image on the other side. Right, there's a little froggy face looking at me. I'm still not happy with that nose, I will be honest. That is annoying me, that bit that's sticking out there. So I'm going to cover that bit more. You might not have this problem. You might have the perfect nose on your frog, and I hope you do. It's just me. It's, I'm just being a bit pedantic now, I guess. So he's just got to put up with that. Probably, I don't want to cover up everything else now. Where are the nostrils gone? Might have to redo his nostrils as well. Let's see how we go. Okay, do you think I'm going to do this this time? He's having definitely a nose job here. Yeah, I might have to do the uh, redo the nostrils. I wonder what um, people are um, putting into their comments. It's the most disgusting thing they've kissed. <clears throat> right. Might be something that, um, you know, there might be some things that people don't find bad at all and then others find absolutely gross. See, I'll, I kiss my dogs all the time, I kiss my children all the time. Um, My children, um, my daughter who likes ferrets, she kisses the ferrets. I think that's pretty disgusting because they really stink. And yeah, <laughs> they have this really 
nice musty smell right okay i'm going to leave his nose like this now um i was happier with his nostrils earlier because they were more symmetrical but um i i, I think this is where i could go down a rabbit hole and i certainly don't want to do that here we go make that one a bit more distinct again So you can smooth them out a, lit, a lot more by um, using um, a finer needle. But the main thing now is that you give him the right body proportion. So now I have got that much green wool left, loads of green wool, so I can fatten him up quite a bit. Um, for this, you might have to just um, open an, his arms up and get them out of the way. You might want to go around his shoulders again um, just to give him a thicker neck. All of that is still possible. Now you've got the rest of the wool and you can you know that you don't need it for anything else other than to make your frog a little bit more sturdy. So with frogs, what you need to um, remember is that their, their upper bodies are bigger, but they're, they've got really narrow hips. So do um, add more wool to the upper body, but try not to add more here. So you can sort of give him more of a bottom if you like. Um, if you if he's wrapped around a heart, um, you won't see his bum at all unless you look at him from the back. Um, but give him sort of like a almost like a triangular shape. You see where I'm heading with this. Keep it nice and um, keep this part really nice and skinny and slim, and then broaden it up as you go up. So make it a um, triangular shape rather than pear shape or whatever other body shapes there are. <clears throat> and um, you can do this with the rest of the wool. Just belt it on, stab it down. If there's any bits that you need to cover up because they look like they've been wrapped, then just use um, sheets of wool like you did with the head and the eyes. Cover it up with a thin layer with a dusting of wool um, to um, neaten it out. And I'm actually using quite, um, I'm using, um, um, let's use, what is that? Let's use a fine needle because the, the a stabbing, sorry, this is, is this a fine needle? No, this is a medium needle. If you started out with a much coarser needle, then um, now is definitely the time to go down to a needle size to smooth things out a little bit and um, felt them down a bit neater. And put him into shape. Still not, I'm still working on his nose. So there's a bit of detail happening here now. And still build up more of his upper body. I've still got wool here. In fact, I'm going to give, I need to wrap it around the arm a bit more as well because he's got a bit of a gap there. And so this is the time for you to um, give him his perfect shape or whatever you think is perfect. A nice, a nice um, strong upper body, very narrow hips. And then he's got, um, once you put him into the right shape, he, um, he will look a lot more um, in proportion. At the moment, his legs are in, um, and le well, mainly his arms are pointing in all direction, not how you expect it. So at the back, it looks a little bit wrapped here. And this is what I meant about putting a layer over the top. So if you, you're you not building, building up bulk, you're just smoothing down the shape, just a dusting of, um, of wool, like a dust layer, felt it down, and then you cover up anything that might look um, a little bit unsightful underneath. Just felt it down. Could give him orange spots on the back of, of him. Um, there is plenty of orange wool left because you only need a tiny amount to put where his eyes and his um, nose are. I'm going to tickle under his arm. There we go. And I think he might be finished yeah
and I'm running over time as well, which um, um, is unusual, but I have nobody to remind me that I'm going over time. Right, so once you um, pose him, remember to make, well, he will be hugging a heart. So look up the tutorial that we already have on um, how to needle felt hearts. You have got a, the instructions in your pack and there is a free tutorial on how to do it too. And, um, and, and you might want to do lots of hearts anyway. And then what you can do is you can either felt him onto the heart by just stabbing into, his, um, into the fibers on his arms and legs. So you, that is another way of neatening him out, if you like. Let him hug, hug um, onto the heart, wrap his legs around it. And there you go, you've got your very own frog prince um, who all he needs is his crown, crown glued onto his head. Um, that will take a little while to dry, but once it's on, it stays on. And even just using the, um, the glue that I have used, he looks a lot more, I don't know, like um, he looks a bit more like a turtle, this one. But um, um, yeah, there you go. Two done and um, hopefully you can get yours done too. I'm gonna hold the crown onto him now. There. He's um he looks he looks quite sweet actually. Hello little one. Mm, nice. Fit for a kiss these frogs. Um and um I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you've had a um um, you you have some happy winner is um, is is skipping away um, with their fifteen uh, pound gift voucher. All you need to do is once Alicia has announced the winner, send us a message info at themakers.co.uk um, and let us know that um, you've won during one of our live streams, and um, and then we will um, we'll, we will uh, send you the code for um, this fifteen. Uh, pound discount voucher you can spend that at the shop anytime there's no expiry date or sell by date or whatever on there and then hopefully um you you um maybe you want to spend it on the book who knows um or some or remember the felting fiber i, do, I will just say that, that one more time felting fiber fi felting fiber um february um or fiber february um is the code Capital letters F F two F's for February, E B Feb, short for Feb twenty five, and that gives you twenty five percent off all fibers until the end of February twenty eighth of February midnight, and it started already. So get um get all the stashes up, get um um fill fill your sweetie jars with um wool. If you haven't got any sweetie jars, you can buy them at our website as well. Um get all your um wool stashes up so that you've got plenty in um in stock for the future projects that are coming up. Just giving you the heads up so we're doing the bluebell fairy next week. And then we've got the hens and chicks. Um, we're doing a posable bunny, which um, um, we are listing any day now, so you can felt along to that one as well. It's a it's a really cute one. Um, oh, I've got him here. I'm just going to grab him quickly whilst you're looking at the February um, code again. And then the um, that needle felted bunny is going to be available to buy as a kit from our website anytime. And uh, he's also a live stream on the uh, on the eighth of um, on the eighth of March, and here he is. Show him to you now. There you go. He's a he's a very happy little bunny. Um, he can balance standing up, um, balancing on his carrot, and um, well, in theory, he does. Um, he's a bit unwilling at the moment. I just hold him up so you can see him. But he's definitely um, able to balance. He's got a little blue tail and uh, posable ears. So they can actually, they could hang down if you wanted them to be um, down or one up and one down. Fully posable arms and legs. And um, he he's kind of ready for, for Easter or maybe he's just somebody who helps you with your garden, pulls out all the carrots. And uh, that's on the eighth of um, the eighth of March, right? That's all I've got to say for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you um, 
next week. Bye, everybody.